Good morning, guys. Um, this morning, we're just going to go straight into Read, Write, Ink. And we've got a new ditty book today. The ditty book that we are doing today is Ditty 4 called Gus. So what we're going to do first is we're going to have a look at our ditty green words. So we are going to start with our ditty green words. So we're going to read the separate sounds and then blend them together. Okay, so let's start with ah, ah, b, ah, g, b, ah, g, bag. Now it's your turn. You can pause the video and read them through at your own pace. Well done, guys, for reading your ditty green words. Now we've got something a little bit different in this book today. We're going to read the root word first and then the whole word with the ending. For example, listen to me first. B -o -n. Bun. B -o -n -s. Buns. Bun. Buns. Now it's your turn. You can pause the video. Well done. That was tricky, so I'm sure you did fantastic. Now we're going to have a look at our ditty red words. Today we have two ditty red words. Remember, red words don't sound as they look. Okay, so our first ditty red word is of. Of. Your turn. Well done. Our second ditty red word is the, the, your turn. Do we have special friends? The, well done. Now we are going to go on to our nonsense words. Okay, we have four nonsense words here. I'm going to do two with you, then you can pause the video and you can read the other two. Okay, so we're looking for special friends. Can we see any special friends in that first nonsense word? No. Okay, let's sound our nonsense word out. Er. Oh. Mm. Spron. What nonsense. Our next word, t, o, x, t, o, x, tox. What nonsense. You can pause the video now and you can read the next two nonsense words. Well done. We're going to go on to reading our story now. Our story today is called Gus, g, o, s, gus. Our rhyming ditty is about a greedy chimp called Gus. Okay, let's read our story together. A bag of buns. Gus licks his lips and rubs his tongue. Gus gets the bag and runs and runs. Bump. Good reading, guys. Well done. I have two questions to ask you about this story to make sure that we really listened when I was reading the story. So my first question is what did Gus steal? What did Gus steal? Pause the video, answer the question. Well done. Our second question is why does Gus run and run? Why does Gus run and run? Pause the video, can you answer the question? And our last question, our last third question is what happens at the end? What happens at the end of the story? 
Can you pause and answer the question? Well done, guys, for answering those questions. We are going to go on to holding our sentence. Okay. So we have got our hold a sentence and today we have also got some words missing. So I'm really testing you now to make sure that you listen to the story. You can hold the sentence and fill in the gaps. So it's really tricky today. Okay, but I know you guys can do it. So the, the beginning of our sentence, capital letter. Yep. Gus licks his lips and... Mm, mm, mm. Full stop. Gus licks his lips and... Mm, mm, mm. If you need help, you can always rewind the story and have another read so you can see what else Gus does. So we know that Gus licks his lips. Mm. And he... Oh, I nearly told you the answer then. So can you fill in? Gus licks his lips and... Mm, mm, mm. Hold that sentence in your head and can you write it down and fill in the gaps? Well done guys for writing your sentence. Okay, you can always keep the video paused if you need extra time to write your sentence. Okay, so let's have a look. We're going to mark together our sentence. So we've got a capital letter at the beginning, tick. Gus licks his lips. So have we got our finger spaces? Tick. And then finally, have we filled in our gap with the correct words? Gus licks his lips and rubs his tongue. Full stop. Rubs his tongue. Three more ticks. And one for your full stop. Capital letter, Gus licks his lips and rubs his tongue. Well done if you got all of those correct. That was super, super tricky today, okay? If you've got any corrections to make, that's okay. You can just write underneath and um, do your corrections and make sure you're copying this sentence correctly. Okay, for anyone in my group, Mrs. Scorrows or Miss Margisons, um, I really want you to test yourself again. It is tricky already, but can we have a look at Gus? In the story, can you think about Gus? Can you describe Gus? Why do you think Gus steals the buns? Do you think he's hungry or do you just think he's greedy? You can tell me, you could call him, or even better, alliteration. Greedy Gus licks his lips and rubs his tongue. Greedy Gus, oh, two words and a describing word that starts with the same letter, that's called alliteration. Greedy Gus licks his lips and rubs his big, fat, hairy tummy. That'd be a fantastic sentence. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Hi guys, so in English today, we are focusing on the setting of our story, okay? So the setting is the location where your story is set, okay? So it could be the school, it could be in an enchanted forest, it could be in the sea, okay? So what I'm going to do, guys, is I am going to show you Miss Presley in some different settings. What I want you to do is talk about what the settings look like, what you can see, okay? What, how do you think Miss Presley feels in these settings? Okay, so our first setting is, our first setting is, what do you think this setting is? Have a look, where do you think Miss Presley is? How do you think Miss Presley feels in this setting? Some of you might recognize this setting. You have a look close where Miss Presley is. Some of you might have been here before. 
What setting is this? Well, we all know this setting, don't we? We've done a lot of work about this. So where do you think Miss Presley is now? How do you think Miss Presley feels in this setting? What about this setting? Where do you think Miss Presley is now? Look at this beautiful setting. Wow. Just like I am in my very own fairy tale. What can you see? How does this setting, how do you think Miss Presley feels in this setting? Wow. Do you like this setting? What about this setting? How do you think Miss Presley feels? So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to draw and describe our own setting, okay? So what you can do is you can think of your own imaginary setting, or you can look through the fairy tales, okay, and see what settings the, those authors have used. Okay, so here's an example um, of what you could draw. So here is an example of a beautiful setting. I wonder if you can guess what fairy tale this is from. Well done if you said Hansel and Gretel. This is a fantastic gingerbread house drawing with all those beautiful sweets. I wonder who's inside. Hopefully you've got lots of ideas of what you can draw and how to describe. I hope you've got some fantastic ideas of what settings you can draw and describe. I will put the worksheet down the side, okay, in portfolios, I will show you just down here. And it will be labeled English settings and then today's date. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. Hi guys, so this is year one maths and in year one we are going to be comparing lengths, okay, comparing lengths. So what is length? What does that mean? What does that word mean? So length is a type of measurement and it tells us how long or how wide something is, okay. So we can also talk about a length of time but that's a different type of measurement. So we're going to focus on how long or how wide something is. There are lots of different vocabulary, so different words that we can use to describe length when we are describing the length of something, okay? So we're going to focus on these words that I'm going to highlight now, so long, short, longer, shorter, longest, and shortest. They're the six words that we are going to focus on in today's lesson about length. Okay, guys, as you can see, there are lots of different size pencils on the screen. There are lots of different sizes. What we are going to do today is we are going to order the correct, it, put them in order of the smallest, shortest length to the longest length of pencil. So from the shortest length to the longest length. Okay, there are numbers down the side and they say one to six. So what we are going to do is we are going to order these pencils. So you can pause the video and you can talk with whoever is with you and you can sort them out yourself in order or you can go through with me okay so if you want to go yourself have a go yourself you can pause now but if not then you can go through with me and we can try and order them from the shortest to the longest length okay so first can you find the shortest pencil 
the shortest pencil. Okay. Well done. If you said the number six, number six is the shortest pencil. Number six is the shortest. Can you find the longest pencil? So we have found the shortest. Now can you find the longest pencil? Well done if you said number five. So number five is the longest pencil. Okay, now we have found the shortest and the longest. Can you try at home putting the rest in order? If you need, you can go onto your portfolios in Dojo and you can print the sheet off. You can cut out the pencils and you can put them in order or you can draw the pencils or draw some shapes. Okay, so it doesn't have to be pencils. It can just be um, long oblong kind of shapes and then put them in order from the shortest to the longest. Well done for ordering the pencils that you could see on the screen. I have one more activity that you can do at home using just objects from around the house. Okay, what I want you to do is find some objects and can you put them in order from the shortest to the longest. Okay, so what I have found here, I'm gonna try to show you, I've got a highlighter pen, I've got a normal pen, and I've got a TV remote. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in order. So let's have a look at these. Okay, so the highlighter is the shortest, and then we have the pen, which is the next shortest in the middle, and then I have the TV remote which is the longest, okay? So I've just found three objects. So if you are finding it tricky at first, just order three objects. So shortest, longest, and then the size in the middle, okay? If you are finding this super easy, okay? Different objects closer to size and try and order those from shortest to longest. Okay, if you can, can you take pictures of what you do and send them to me so I can see how hard you've been working at home. Well done year one, keep up the good work. Hi guys, so this is year two maths. Okay, so today, if you've seen on your worksheet already, we are doing something called vertices. Vertices. Well done, if anybody knows what the word vertices means already. That is fantastic. I'm going to explain to you what vertices means before we start our worksheet. Right, guys, as you can see, our worksheet today is called Count Vertices on 2D Shapes. Okay, so we're going to focus on the word vertices. It sounds complicated, but it really isn't. Okay, so this word here. There we go, I've just, just gone around it. It says vertices, okay? Vertices is another name for where two lines meet and that point of meeting is called vertices or it could be called a corner, okay? So I will show you here. Here we have got two lines that meet. If we draw another, that would make a triangle. Two lines that meet. So we have one vertices there, one vertices there, and another vertices there. So we have three vertices on a triangle. Okay. Our next shape. Okay. I have started our shape here. And we have found one vertices because this line meets this line and that makes a vertices. We're going to finish our shape off. What shape have I made? It's a square. So we have one vertices, two vertices, three vertices, and four vertices. 
Okay, so where our lines join and make a corner, we have four vertices or corners in a square. Okay, so we're going to count together our first shape, a pentagon. Okay, a pentagon has how many vertices? Okay, so we're going to find our vertices. One, two, three, four, five. A pentagon has five vertices. So corners, where the lines meet is a vertices. Okay, so I want you to have a go at the rest by yourself. If you need any help, all you have to do is message me and I can help you, okay? So for the rest of the sheet, you're working out how many vertices, okay? Right, on our next question that I want to help you with, we have some different shapes here, okay? They're not our standard triangles or squares. But we can still count how many vertices. So I'm going to help you on the first one and then I'd like you to do the rest yourself. So remember where two lines meet and make a corner, that is a vertices, okay? So let's count on our first one. One, two, three, four, five. So this shape here, we have five vertices, okay? Have a go at the other ones by yourself. Okay, it's a little bit tricky, but I'm sure you'll be able to do it. Hi guys, I hope you're all keeping up to your daily fitness. Uh, here I am doing mine with Joe Wicks, featuring Bren. Bren will be doing hers as well. You ready? <laughs> well done guys i hope you complete the whole workout i'm gonna get on with it now enjoy hi guys so this is the last lesson of the day and it is re so religious education today we're going to talk about people that we care about so we're going to identify people that we care about in our own lives so i have got some pictures that i have at home of people or animals that we care about. And I'm going to talk to you about why I care about these people. So this is my first picture. So this picture you can see is my grandma and my granddad. And I really care about my grandma and granddad because they are so kind, they are so loving, and they are so caring towards everybody that they come across. So that is my grandma and granddad who I care about so much in my life. This picture here, this is my mum. And I really care about my mum because she is just so loving and she is so kind to everyone that she meets. And as you've seen in a few videos, this is Brem. And I care about Bren so much. Bren is my first ever dog. And I love her so much. I care about her loads. I care about Bren because she is funny, she is cheeky, and she is really cute. So this is my dad in this picture, and I care about him loads. Okay. He is so loving and kind to others. He is generous, and he makes me laugh loads every time I see him. And this, and if you can see, is my niece. Okay, and I care about her so much. She is such a gorgeous little girl. She is so loving and kind and funny and she makes me laugh so much. She is very clever and she is in year one, just like some of you guys, in a different school. And I care about her so much. So guys, what I would like you to do, okay, is I would like you to talk, have a think about and talk about with um, whoever's at home with you, who you care about in your family or who you care about 
that isn't in your family, such as friends, um, maybe teachers. OK, just people who you care about and why. Why do you care about these people? Once you've talked about it, what I want you to do is I'm going to post on Dojo a template of a hand. OK, so just like this. So on Dojo, you will see templates of hands. On these hands, I would like you to write the people that you care about and why you care about them. OK, so for example, so what I've written is mum and the word happy because I care about my mum and she makes me really happy. She is so kind and generous. And I could also write those words as well on my hand. So that's what I would like you to do today for your RE, okay, is I want you to discuss different members of your family or friends or anyone that you know in your life that you care about. And then I would like you to copy the template of the hand so you could either draw around your own hand on a piece of paper, or you can use the template to write who you care about and why. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.